that computer is really weird. We're trying a new thing. Yeah, we are trying a new thing. Um, Caleb is not with us. He is on the beach right now. <laughs> I am. Sorry about beach that. Are you on, Caleb? I'm. Uh, I'm in Hawaii. Really? So specifically, Honolulu. Yeah, it must be nice. Must be nice. <laughs> um, we we got a new place. Yeah. We have stairs now. Stairs. Look at that. And um, a wall. So you're going to have to bear with us on the decoration side of things. You're also going to have to bear with us on the quality of video side of things. Uh, we will work all that out here in the next coming weeks. Uh, I feel like Caleb's quality is pretty good, though. Where'd you get a cup? Huh? Are you sitting in front of a table at the beach or something? I mean, they have beach chairs, and I got the sand as my table. <laughs> The Batman cup. All right, well, right into Oops. it. <laughs> right into it. If I mean, if you're watching, you know this is Coach's Kingdom, where it's all sports all the time, uh, except for last week. Except for last week. Except definitely. for last week, where it was all moving all the time. Yeah, yeah, we were moving, so there was a reason the video didn't get posted last week. <clears throat> that was all kinds of fun. I wish promise we you, we will that. not move again for at least a year. So. <laughs> so we're we're all good on that part but um all right so I, I guess the biggest news right now is uh aaron Rodgers, yeah. highest paid man in the nfl what? ever what i'm getting is like really toxic vibes from him as in like oh i hate you i never want to see you again oh but baby i love you so much please take me back you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I get that. Uh, I'm. If you really look at it, uh, a lot of people were saying that Aaron Rodgers had all the leverage and all that, you know, against the Packers, where when he really did, uh, he was under contract for another year. If he really wanted to leave Green Bay, he just would have played out this year and gone into free agency next year. And there's nothing that the Packers would have been able to do. So yeah, I mean. I mean, he can throw around teams that he wants to go to all day long, but yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, so, I mean, if he was really going to leave, he just would have played out his contract and called it, a, you know, a career in Green Bay. Or, I mean, the only leverage he had was to say, I'm not playing football anymore, but then you don't get paid. So you don't get paid, then you don't play. Pretty right, because his, his deal was, what, five or four years, $200 million? Yeah, well, I, that's Aaron Rodgers came out and said that wasn't true. So, yeah, I so I mean, I don't know now, if that true. was true. That makes him the highest paid player in NFL history. Yeah, um, he was the the deal that came out was four years, two hundred million, one hundred and fifty or one hundred fifty three guaranteed, somewhere yeah. in that that range. Um, now, a lot of people are sitting here wondering about Jordan Love. He's not um, play now. You you've you've drafted this kid, and at some point Washington? he's going to get frustrated and he's going to want to get traded. Jordan, Jordan Love, Washington? Utah State. I thought I thought it was Washington. No, it was Utah State. No, he, was, Utah uh, State sounds right. Yeah, I think Eason was Utah or Washington. <clears throat> no, Jacob Eason was uh, Georgia, then Washington. That's where he went. Yeah, he transferred. Yeah, that was it. Um. But yeah, I mean, I, I think, and there was a report out saying that uh, the Packers could get a second rounder for Jordan Love. I'd say right now, if you if you could get a second round pick for Jordan Love, you take that in a minute. I mean, like, yeah, um, you, know, you get a second rounder for Jordan Love after last year. I don't know. That was a lie. That was a straight up lie. Because there ain't, I wouldn't even give him a seventh rounder for Jordan Love, much less a second. You know, so yeah, you want you want to bring him over to my franchise? You're gonna have to first off. Take three quarters of the salary gap. Well, I mean, his salary cap isn't that huge. It's I mean, not he was, that huge, but is it worth what he's making? He was a first round pick. So, I mean, if if you develop him the right way, could he become something? Maybe. We haven't seen enough of him, but I think we've seen enough to say he's not going to be Aaron Rodgers, whatever they call it, the, the successor. Successor, yeah. Successor, yeah. So, you're kind of seeing a similar situation with, in Buffalo right now with uh, Mitch Trubisky. 
he is he's actually being sought out by several teams until the commanders made their decision today it was between them and the giants now the giants are um vying very heavily for him right now um, we do if daniel jones was my only option yeah and i mean and you see he got away from stupid chicago and no and half an offensive coordinator and half a defensive coordinator yep. um, and a half a head coach. And you see, he actually did pretty well when Josh Allen went, yep. went out for his couple games. So, I mean, but if I'm Buffalo, I don't know if I give him up. Well, they ain't got a choice. They only signed him to a one year deal. So he'll be a free agent. I, Ooh, yeah, I, I mean, in my opinion, the best free agent quarterback on the market uh, right now is Jameis. So, I mean, I, I absolutely 100% think that Jameis is the best. I'm not saying he is so a great, necessarily great. But yeah, but out of all out of all the quarterbacks on the market right now, he is the best option out there. I mean, and there's not really much to pick from, you know. So you got like uh, Marcus Mariota, but yeah, I've uh, got the list of the top 100 right now, yeah. and. Uh, Jameis ranks at 27, and the next quarterback doesn't come in until 68, mm-hmm. and that's Teddy Bridgewater. Yeah, so Teddy B. I think he's proved to everyone that he's not a starter in this league. I mean, and I don't really think that's his fault. I really think hey, that's Teddy more of injury fault. Free agency? He's going to be, yeah. I heard that uh, instead of trading Drew Lock. The original offer was for them to trade Teddy Bridgewater. Yeah, in a sign and trade. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's all that was. Because Teddy Bridgewater is a free agent, they would have had to get Teddy's approval to sign and then trade him to Seattle, which I'm sure he'd have been fine with. Because, I mean, I get to throw to DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett. Yeah, sign me up. Right, absolutely. So, um, speaking of Denver and Seattle – yeah. For those of you that don't know, Russell Wilson was traded to Denver. That he's been he's been most, one out of Seattle in the most lopsided trade I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was it definitely gave me Titans and Rams trade vibes when they gave us like the first round draft pick for the next 9 years or whatever. Well, do you remember when uh, the Saints gave up their whole draft to get Ricky Williams? Yeah. Yeah. That, that gave it, me this vibe right here. Absolutely. So, so, if you don't know, Denver gave up Drew Locke, Noah Fant, Shelby Harris, um, 2021 or 2022 first round, which is number nine overall, uh, 2022 second round, which is number 40 overall, 2022 fifth round, and a 2023 first and second. And Seattle gave them Russell Wilson and a fourth round pick for this year. Um, yeah. Uh, would you your admit? weapons are good in Denver. They are. Your line's a little bit better. Your defense may be a little bit better. But yeah, I don't know if I'm trading away my whole team for that. What the real question is here is, would y'all have made that trade? I, I, would. I don't know. You've got, you've got promising talent coming up in the draft. Drew Locke is not that bad. He's just young. Um, you have the you do have the option of Jameis Winston is out there, Teddy Bridgewater is out there, Marcus yeah, Mariota is out there to get because, you by. Just because they got Drew Lock doesn't mean they're still going to not you know go after another quarterback. Whether it's a, right, be the rumor draft, right now, free agency. Yeah, I don't. The, I don't think the Drew rumor right. Their, so, you know their answer there. So, yeah. but I did see a meme on uh, on Twitter that said, "Poor Noah Fant, he's the loser in this whole trade because he had Drew Lock throwing to him before the trade." And after the trade now. So. Caleb actually yeah. told me before the podcast happened that there was a rumor out there. Caleb, you want to go over that? Yeah, so the rumor is that the reason why – one of the reasons why they chose Denver, other than they wanted to keep Russell out of the NFC, was that they were looking at Malik Willis with that first pick at nine. Um with what with the little bit that I saw of the combine, I do feel like that might be a viable option for them. It's definitely not the only option, but it is one. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're the only problem I have with that 
is you better believe that Malik Willis is going to be the answer at the quarterback position because you've got no offensive line right now. Mm-hmm. No offensive line, hardly a defense, and and very little cap space. Yeah, I mean, honestly, Seattle's looking at a full rebuild. Yeah. I mean. And I don't understand what Pete Carroll's doing right now because at his age, there's no way he's going to go through a whole nother rebuild. You know, at this Pete, point. Pete Carroll – I think that they're just not saying it yet. I really don't think he's going to be the coach next year. I don't know. I'm getting real weird vibes of cleaning house, but I don't know for sure. I mean, it's a little too late to go firing your coach now. Uh, I don't know. He got a lot of time. Yeah. yeah. You just have to make sure you do it before the draft because you want to build your team to what the next coach can work with. So you've got a month. Yeah. A little over a month to make that decision. Totally. Speaking of the draft or of the uh, combine, uh, performances there. Um, what did y'all think about Malik Willis? Um, so a lot of people gave him flack for not hitting that deep pass. Um, what I saw personally was I saw a receiver not capable of running the route. It was a consistent one too because he did it multiple times. That same kid. I don't remember who he was. Yeah. He right. Like he, he just couldn't keep up with the route. He was not a deep route receiver. And that was, that was what stood out to me, but everybody gave Malik flag for that. Um, because he should have known you, you're going to throw the route where you're supposed to throw the route. He's got to get there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, if we're going over the most impressive quarterback at the combine, I think it's easily a one a and one B you know, who, who you, you know, who you, you think is the best at that point, but there's no one that was close to one A and one B and that was Malik Willis and Carson Strong. They, yeah, absolutely. They, they, they absolutely showed out. And you saw a sneak peek as to Kenny Pickett's underwhelming arm strength. Yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. I mean, just that's inaccurate. Uh, Arm strength is a big question now. I mean, it really wasn't beforehand, but now it definitely is. Uh, and and you don't know if that really is arm strength or just deep deep throw accuracy. Uh, is it something that is going to be a consistent problem? And that's something that he's going to really have to improve on in his pro day. Absolutely, and that's that's one of those things. I really feel like deep throw accuracy and throw strength are really just almost the same thing, yeah. but they're not quite. You know. Um, I, I definitely feel like um, I had high hopes for Pickett coming into the end of the combine. Um, from what I've seen, I've not been impressed. I was actually more impressed with the kid from North Carolina Same than I was with him. Yeah. Yeah. I am actually – I'm going to go on record. Brian's heard me say it multiple times. Uh, Brian will say it's way too early to make this call. Kenny Pickett's a bust. Oh, I don't doubt it. I don't doubt that one bit. You can draft him third round. He's a bust. Unless unless it's just a team that's going to nickel and dime you to death like a, um, a New England or something like that. But New England's got Mac Jones. They're yeah. building their team. Well, so, I mean, they're not, there's yeah. not many. If, if the rumor is true and Seattle does take Malik Willis at nine, sitting there at 15, I believe, or 15, 17, or 19, one of the odd ones right there, but – uh, it's Pittsburgh. And do you have the draft order in front of you? Yeah, I do. Pittsburgh is a 20. 20. So, Pittsburgh at 20. Of your, one of your consistent problems with Pittsburgh this year was Big Ben could not throw the deep ball. Yeah, I understand that. But he could also not throw it two yards past the line of scrimmage. So, when you've got receivers as good as James Washington and Chase Claypool running the slant routes – uh, I, I mean, you're handing off to Najee Harris. You hope to get him a little bit more involved, and you've got Fryermuth at tight end. I can see Kenny Pickett fitting in there a, a decent amount as long as you start building an offensive line there. That's uh, strong team. No, I That's don't think Carson strong will go there team. and be successful. I, I think strong is going to the Raiders. I really do. I, I, I really feel it. I said it since early. I mean, I really feel like the Raiders, the Raiders are going to draft him. Carson Strong is Big Ben when he was drafted. I see more Josh Allen and Carson Strong than I do a Big Ben. 
like I could see Carson and, and I mean decently athletic. The kid is just he needs to calm down when he's in the pocket. You can only get so much from your pro day and from your combine. Watch the tape. You know, so he he's just very indecisive. And when he does have those indecisive throws, those are the ones that get intercepted or just too far or too short. You know, he's just indecisive. And I don't think it's him being inaccurate. I think it's just him thinking too many things at one time. So I could see Carson Strong sitting for a year, kind of like Trey Lance's situation over in San Francisco. Uh, Maybe Tampa takes a chance and trades up. Uh, That was the other thing I was going to ask. Right here from, I would arguably say from pick four or five, which is the Jets and the Giants, to pick nine, there's somewhere between nine and 11. You're looking at potential teams that need a quarterback, but you've also got the Raiders who could very well be in the market. You've got the Saints sitting back at 18 who are in the market. Um You've got the Steelers sitting back at 20 that are in the market. I mean, you've got teams that are going to be having to find a quarterback pretty quick, and Tampa Bay is sitting back at 27. So what are the what do you think that the opportunity for a trade? Now, the, the team that has the most first-round trade um, ability, they've got the most to give right now, is the Eagles. They've got three picks in the first round. Yeah. But um, I think if you're smart and you have three picks like that, trading back on one of those picks is your best option, get more picks for later. So mm-hmm. I don't think they'll use all three. Maybe they do, but have a later pick in the, the, the first round than expected, or they trade so up. I they use they all like. three. So there's our, there's our 15, 16, and 19. Um. Now, obviously, you need some wide receiver talent. You need some offensive line. I think they've got a big offensive lineman that's uh, going to walk. With the way everybody's mocking Mechie right now, I can see Mechie going that far. Mechie? Yeah. Give him another um, receiver. Which is dangerous. But I mean, he said he wants to play with Mac Jones if possible, so. And that would be pick 21. Yep. So the Eagles, if they keep all three picks, would have picked three times before he got – he would go to the Eagles, which I don't see that happening. Or, the or before he would go to the Patriots. Yeah. Um, yeah, because looking at this draft order, I mean, with the updated with Seattle at nine, um, they kind of – it kind of makes it interesting. Yeah, definitely. I mean – Seattle, they had if you if you look at it, pick ten is the Jets, and they already had the fourth pick overall. Mm-hmm. The Jets got that pick by trading Jamal Adams to Seattle. Mm-hmm. So originally, Seattle would have been at the tenth, you know, tenth overall. So, so theoretically, you would have had number nine and ten right there back to back. Yeah, and all you had to do was not trade for a washed-up safety. But, you know. <laughs> it's hard sometimes. It's hard. I know. Sorry, like, safety you know. slash linebacker. Yeah, yeah pretty much. We were talking yeah, about Troy <laughs> we were talking But not as good. Aiden Hutchinson. Pretty daggum good. Pretty daggum um, good. So, Aiden Hutchinson, from what I've heard, I like he had a great combine day. Right now, all the mocks have him at number two going to the Lions, uh, which I think that'd be an awesome fit. Michigan kid going to Detroit. Every game is a home game for you um, in, a, in a budding program. Um, they've got Jacksonville at number one trying to decide between two offensive tackles. Yeah, uh, Evan Neal out of Alabama and Akeem Aquonu out of NC mm-hmm. State. I like uh, Inquanu better. Like better out of NC State than I do Evan Neal, but I haven't seen – I mean, I've seen Evan Neal play, but I haven't seen his pro day yet because he didn't participate in the combine uh, due to injury. But I really do like Inquanu better. I think he's a more athletic tackle, uh, one that can definitely pull if need be, one that uh, – his pass blocking is better than Neal's, but I feel like Neal's run blocking is a little bit better. But 
with the quarterback you have right now, I think you're solely focused on the pass blocking. I, I don't think you really care as much about the run blocking because you've got two potentially really good running backs in Travis Etienne, thank you, Urban Meyer, and uh, <laughs> James Robinson. So they've got the running back room handled. They won't, they won't have a problem there as long as ETN comes back healthy. Now, I will say a notable free agent at 49 on the list for the Jacksonville Jaguars is DJ Chark. Um, you got you to gotta take that into account if you're going to – I imagine they try to re-sign him. Yeah. Um, well, because he was, your, he was your true receiver, your one, your one guy you could trust to catch a football. Yeah. Speaking of re-signing, I know this is changing topic, um, but it really pissed me off when I saw it come across the TV screen, so I want to cover it real quick. The, the Dolphins never re-signed Emmanuel Ogba. Not yet. No, they did not. Not yet. Um, he is number 15 on the list right now. Yeah, he's hitting uh, up the market. Only thing is um, they have Jacob Phillips now, so Jacob Phillips is probably going to take over the primary – Jalen, sorry, Jacob's the linebacker for the Browns, but uh, Jalen Phillips, um, he is he's probably going to be pushed into the primary pass rushing role um, if they don't get Ogba back. Well, yeah, but you get one good defensive lineman, then the line's going to know who to target versus having two. Everything's going to run better. It just depends because you've got a few defensive linemen also available. Um, in the in the offseason and free agency, but also in the draft. I mean, it just depends on what they want to do. Um, if they want to go young or if they – I mean, they can sign him back. Just because he's hitting the free market doesn't necessarily mean they've not already been in contact. Excuse me. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you've got to think this is, in my opinion, this is one of the deeper drafts that I've seen uh, as far as defensive line and offensive line goes. Um, I think if you're really struggling at the offensive and defensive line positions or edge rushers, um, you could really take have an issue in this draft. Yeah, you you will not have an issue. Um, now I'm gonna I'm gonna circle back around. We kind of got off topic there for a minute. Um, back to the breaking news because we've we've still got a few things to cover. Yeah, um, fault, but no, it was mine. Yeah. Um, so obviously now today and later today, the truth came out. Wentz has been traded to the commanders just to exchange second round picks. Yeah, when pretty you you traded your first round pick uh 16th overall to the Philadelphia Eagles for Carson mm -hmm. Wentz and another, I believe it was a third rounder or fourth rounder. And mm -hmm. uh you know, That's all he had left. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And now they're in talks about getting Jimmy G, which I just don't see for what, because San Francisco is going to command a lot. They, just, I mean, he just took them to the NFC Championship game. Right. They they don't have any any kind of draft stock now. Um, Indianapolis has been on, on record saying that they were not happy with his leadership skills. Um, and Washington has also agreed to take his entire contract. There's not been any kind of split or cut or anything like that. If um, you're a Washington, are you really going to gamble a team that really only, like, the big thing that they need is a quarterback? Are you going to gamble on Carson Wentz? That's so, what pisses me off. Yeah. That was that was my question to y'all. Uh, was So, they were – they had also made offers. So, back up a little bit. Commanders – the Commanders offered high-round draft picks for the next three drafts for Russell Wilson. The only reason they did not get him is because they wanted to keep him out of the NFC. They wanted they wanted to trade him to the AFC. Um, I'm wondering if maybe a little bit of panic set in of not being able to get somebody. Um, obviously, if you've got bad knees, you don't go to FedEx Field. There have been two very, very bad ones. Yeah, but I mean, what you didn't say is on that third round pick, uh, if he plays 70 or 75 percent of the snaps uh, in next year's season, then uh, it, that third round pick turns into a second. So they'll get a second back essentially if he pretty much has a decent year uh, and, and starts. 
Yeah. So a conditional third. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you also got to think they've got uh, Tyler Taylor Haneke. Tyler uh, Taylor Haneke. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I mean, it just depends on who's playing better, in my opinion. But do you and maybe out, do you fill out that quarterback room with some some veteran that maybe takes more of a leadership role, uh, like a Teddy Bridgewater, like a uh, you know, do you bring uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick back? Do you, you know? Do you fill it out with someone that that's more of a veteran that's been in the league for a little bit? Uh, Jacoby Brissett, you know, someone like that that could come. Someone's going to teach you. Yeah, you can versus sit there, there and watch. And you're good with Heineke and wins. I don't know if you can do better with Fitzpatrick than you can with Wentz. Fitzpatrick, he's stiff. You saw him in the first game, and that's why he got hurt when he did was because he's so stiff. I don't think he's really cut out to be the quarterback anymore of any team unless he's willing to take a backup role. Absolutely. He's kind of like a clipboard Jesus type deal. Um, White Hurst. He, uh, I mean, think, he didn't even win his own Super Bowl. He's got a ring because Nick Foles is better than him. Yep. I hate to say it, but it's true. Who? Um, Nick Foles. Oh, Carson Wentz. Is that who you're talking yeah. about? Oh, yeah. Okay. Nick Foles is better than Carson Wentz. Magic. Yeah, I thought you were saying Fitzpatrick's got a Super Bowl. I was like, nah. Hey. Nah. <laughs> uh, that's the only magic he can't finish. Yeah. Um. So. Good. You've also got the Titans have re-signed Harold Landry to a five-year, eighty-seven and a half million dollar deal. Fifty-two and a half of that is guaranteed. The Titans also signed today to your Tart, Nick Westbrook, Bikina, and Logan Woodside. Yep. To all to one year deals, just extensions. Um, you're you're real. In my opinion, you look like you're stacking up that defense with what you had because you didn't have many broken pieces. Maybe strengthen up your defensive back core a little bit. Um, Which they're probably going to cut Janoris Jenkins. Uh, to save about four million, cut Kendall Lamb to save about six million. So there's ten right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're probably going to see right before this new league year starts, Taylor Lewan or Roger Saffold get cut. Uh, I don't think it'll be both. I just think it'll be one or the other. I don't think you can lose both of those and have a solid offensive line. We got so Saffold. while I've been filling this out, we've also got to realize the Titans don't have Ben Jones right now as well. True. Um. Now, there are several centers, there are several center guards and tackles out there that are very much well worth their money. Actually, the number one overall right now is Teron Armstead, um, who He's plays tackle. tackle. Yep. Um, you've got Brandon Scherf, who's a guard. You've got yeah, Ryan you've Jensen. You've got to look in the money, pro, you know. The oh, money. yeah. So, they're just not going to have a lot of cap room. So, if you're really oh, – that, that was just the top of the list. There's still several on here significantly lower that are more more than worth it like who i mean you got dwayne brown at 35 overall yeah but he's I still mean, a tackle i mean you're looking more into the uh to the guard to center you know guard to well, just center. like the farther the furthest back that i see without going into the draft i think let me find him was lincoln tomlinson that i thought was worth it yeah, and I really like uh, Trey Turner from Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's he's really good on the run blocking side. You don't really need – I mean, when you're talking about pass blocking, a lot of our passes are play action, so it's really not the blocking that makes that play. It's more so the fake. Uh, so you're really looking more into the, the run blocking side of things. Since I mean, you're going to see a lot of Derrick Henry next year. So mm-hmm. – or, I mean, even when he's out, Deon, you know, we've got Deontay Foreman, uh, Dontrell Hilliard that'll well, take it. I think you'll see a lot of Deontay Foreman yeah. next year. I think y'all found a – We found a piece. I wouldn't say another Derrick Henry, but you <laughs> found something that's that gum close. Yeah. Um, given enough, so just, he could be real good. <clears throat> but so I do the, think inevitably, I think the Titans will re-sign uh, Ben Jones. Uh, I know he wants to be here. I know the Titans want him based on the what Mike Vrabel has said about him. Uh, he absolutely loves Ben Jones. He's the hardworking type, and that's – apparently Tennessee Titans are just known for getting blue-collar players. So, uh, Which is good. I mean, yeah. 
if you if you're gonna if you're gonna be a player in the NFL, you need to be blue collar because you need to work hard. Yeah. I mean, um, now something to keep in the back of your mind. Yeah. Um, Seattle has also showed interest in trading for Deshaun Watson in Houston. Um, nothing too crazy yet. I don't think any offers have been made. But yeah, they have but, uh, have we asked. heard anything on – Yes. So, so he's okay. going to court on Friday. Okay. Is so tomorrow Friday or Friday? Friday? Uh, well, tomorrow's Thursday. But, yeah, that is uh, – oh. Yeah. That is Friday, like yeah. this upcoming Friday. Yeah, so that is like Friday. Yeah, this um, is being recorded on Wednesday. You just heard Michael. Yeah. Forget what day it was. <laughs> so, and, and since we went ahead and touched on that, I'm going to touch on this too. Um, Brian, Brian Flores has come out and said that he wants his lawsuit against the NFL heard um, in court. So I don't think we've seen the end of that, but I think that it will be kept as much under the rug as they can. Yeah, and I think we said it on the last podcast. I can't remember, but Brian Flores did get hired to the Pittsburgh mm-hmm. Steelers as a senior defensive uh, defensive assistant. So he will be on Pittsburgh staff, as far as we know right now, even though he is suing the NFL. So I don't know how that's going to work out for him, but uh, here's the best to him. I'll tell you what, them refs are going to hate Pittsburgh. Why are the refs going to hate Pittsburgh? Because they work for the NFL. This is true. Well, part time. <laughs> um, so, and just to throw these out there real quick, these are the only handful of franchise tags um, from yesterday. Uh, Miami franchise tag, Mike Jacecki, Dallas had Dan Schultz, Jacksonville had Cam Robinson, Kansas City had Orlando Brown Jr., Cincinnati had Jesse Bates, Cleveland had David Njoku, Green Bay had Devonta Adams, and that's just reported. That's not official just yet. Um, and Tampa Bay has, has – done Chris Godwin, but they are also working on a long-term deal. There are a few teams in there that I don't understand, like Miami, uh, franchise tagging, Jusecki. I think you um, had to do that. Yeah, I agree. I I mean, yeah, honestly. That gives, you what, that gives you one more year with them. Well, that gives you one more year to make a deal. Okay. Not only to do that, Jusecki is going to command more than $10.89 million. In a year, if you can get him for ten point, you know, ten million or essentially eleven million, uh, if you can get him for eleven million, that's a steal, dude. Jacek oh, is going to be a fifteen to seventeen, you know, player just because of his check down reliability. So, I think getting Jaseki for eleven million at one year is a is a steal for this year's cap charge. Yeah, I mean. Uh, the one that I didn't understand was Cincinnati doing Jesse Bates instead of doing uh, C.J. Uzma. Well, I think you can get a better player than C.J. Uzoma uh, either on the open market because get your tight ends out real quick on your free agent list. Yeah. But, I mean, you're looking at number – the first tight end that comes to mind is obviously uh, Rob Gronk. You've got Evan Ingram. You've got – But with that passing offense, there's one guy I hope the Titans look at that has been overlooked by, at, at this point, and that's because he had Gronk come in front of him in Tampa Bay. And uh, uh, mm-hmm. what is it? Bait, Brait? Cameron Brait? Cameron Brait, yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. So I think the best tight end on, you know, on the market right now, and this is the best one overall in my opinion, is O.J. Howard. They picked him yeah. overall out of Alabama, and everybody just forgot him when Gronk got there. Right, and I mean he was playing really, really well, and he's playing at the level to replace Cameron yeah. Bray. Yeah. Um, but then he got it; he did get a minor injury, and that's when it just happened to be at the same time Rob Gronk came in. Yeah, um, so it, it looked kind of bad, but he he's got some stuff he was getting over. I really think so. Gather my words here. The Titans have already reached out to Rob Gronk. Mm-hmm. And I really hope, like, he's a great tight end. No doubt about it. But there are definitely more tight ends that are worth less money that we could get into the franchise. Now, we've got, like, our tight ends are not bad. Yeah. But I, but I think what they want is a more reliable tight end. Well, I think what they're doing, if they do go that route, 
is they're going to look at tight ends like Ertz, uh, Graham, Jimmy Graham, Gronk, mm-hmm. you know, the older tight ends, Eric Ebron, just to see uh, how it would be getting a veteran tight end end with a rookie. Say they get uh, Jelani Woods in the draft or, you know, uh, any of those rookie tight ends in the draft. If they pair them two together, they can re-sign Jeff Swain, who I think is the most important tight end that we had on the roster last year, mainly because of his blocking. Uh, that way you have those three guys right there and your tight end room just became a, a hell of a lot better. Yeah. Um, honestly, if I'm looking at the blocking side of it, um, which is probably the most important part because you've got your play action passes, but you've really got to open up the hole for Derrick Henry and Foreman. Um, there's there's probably, really a lot of tight ends on the market this year that, that could be really good, but aren't yet like uh, – uh, Robert Tunyon from the Packers, Hayden mm-hmm. Hurst from the Falcons. Uh, I mean, Evan Ingram from the Giants. I think if you get these, if you get these guys in better situations, you're really looking at could, what could be Pro Bowl tight ends. I'm not saying any of them will be, but they definitely have the potential to be uh, Pro Bowl tight ends. So, uh, you know, I just want to make sure I'm not missing any any gimmies here, but I think that was it. The ones I wanted to name there. Yeah. Mo Alley, Mo Alley Cox at a, uh, from the Colts. Indianapolis. Yeah. I think he could be really good. I think with Jack Doyle retiring uh, for the Colts, I think Mo Alley Cox will probably get re-signed and, and continue to play there. But uh, if he does go somewhere else with a uh, more reliable quarterback than Carson Wentz, I think he could definitely uh, become a starting tight end in this league. No, I know I'm being on topic, but I'm asking questions as they pop into my head. Mm-hmm. Have we heard anything about Devontae Adams? So he did. He Franchise did, tagged. He got tagged. That was the deadline was at three o'clock on Tuesday, March 8th. Yeah. Which was yesterday. Okay. Yeah, which was yesterday. Um, so he did get tagged. Uh, but we don't know. I'm assuming they're working on some sort of a long-term deal, but I think you've got to get Aaron Rodgers done first, figure out what your cap situation is going to be, and then figure out if you're going to just keep Devontae for that franchise tag year and you can tag him one more year after that. Um, And if Aaron Rodgers' contract works out a way where he can get out of Green Bay after two years, um, I could definitely see Devontae being a free agent and Aaron being a free agent at that point. Package deal. Package deal. Without having to be traded, too. That's the big thing. Yeah. Um, So I'm just looking over this list here. And there are several on this list that I don't know if they – I'm going to say 95% of them either get re-signed to where they are currently or they don't last very long. Well, position. And just like honestly, everything I've got top yeah. 100 overall. Oh, God. I mean, you've got Armstead, Chandler Jones, Von Miller, Tyron Matthew, Brandon Scherf, Hold up, Bobby Wagner. Hold up a second. I kind of want to get into the Bobby Wagner thing in a minute, mm-hmm. but I want to get to the outside linebacker portion for a second. So the two most important to me, aside from Von Miller, who's who's got age concerns with me, but. Aside from Von Miller, I think the two most important guys out there are JPP, Jason Pierre-Paul, yep, and uh, and Chandler Jones. And I think that's why Emmanuel Ogba did not get signed by the Dolphins was to go get Chandler Jones. You free up cap room by not signing Ogba, and you bring mm-hmm. in Phillips last year to learn from Ogba and play, get some experience, and now you really get him with an experienced, successful pass rusher like Chandler Jones or JPP. So. Uh, I really do think that that could be a, a route the Dolphins take. Absolutely. I, it's kind of what I was thinking um, while I was making this list. I'm looking at them and I'm like, there's so these are so there's so many teams that need a good pass rusher. Yeah, and there are several now. Obviously, Von Miller. Are you willing to pay enough for a Jason Beer Polo? It's Miami. I don't know what Miami's cap room is. That's big. I mean, if it's big, then yeah. I mean, he's going to easily command $20 million a year, maybe more. So if you're looking at $20 million a year 
for four years. What is that, 80 million? Mm-hmm. So I actually I think it'll be more than that because Landry just signed for a four eighty seven and a half or, or five eighty seven and a half. So I think he could command a four hundred million dollar deal over four years. Mm-hmm. What about which would break you down to thirty and some change a no, year? I thought that was twenty five. Oh yeah, twenty five over four years. Fast math is what we're not good at here on the Coach's Kingdom podcast. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, so something interesting I wanted to bring up about Bobby Wagner. He yeah. actually showed up the same day in 2012 as Russell Wilson. And he also gets released the same day that Russell Wilson leaves. So, I mean, I'm really, I'm really getting full rebuild vibes from Seattle. Well, those are the last two from the Legion of Boom era. So, I mean, obviously, the Legion of Boom was the defense from Seattle Seahawks 2012 to, like, 2014-15. The Super Bowl. Yeah. The Super Bowl defense. And that was defensively. Russell Wilson was the quarterback. But, you know, if you're going to – yeah. So, this – there's, like, no one left. Marshawn retired. You know, the receivers are gone. Tight ends are gone. Actually, I think Lockett was there at the end of it. But he wasn't there at the beginning. But – No, it was Doug Baldwin. Yeah, Doug Baldwin. That's right. Uh, but, yeah, so, I mean, Wilson and Bobby Wagner were what was left. I think they're trying to get away, you know, away so quickly from that era, and it just doesn't make sense to me. I mean, you let everybody on that defense go. K.J. Wright, who is in freaking sane. Uh, I mean, K.J. KJ Wright and Bobby Wagner were an, an unstoppable duo in the middle. I mean, and it could be argued that KJ Wright is probably the most underrated linebacker of all time. Yeah, I, I would believe that. I mean, right now everybody's kind of looking at Bobby Wagner as, I guess, the current Ray Lewis type. Yeah, like a Patrick Willis. Yeah. Yeah. So that that high tier linebacker. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't think there will be any shortage for him to find a place to play football. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, if he was willing to take a uh, – some sort of a, you know, kind of like a uh, go – super you know, go to the Super Bowl deal, there is one team that just won the Super Bowl that is in desperate need for a Mike linebacker, and that would be freaking the Rams, man. I'm telling you, if he goes to the Rams, we're all screwed and just chalk it up as a Rams Super Bowl win right now. Not if the Bengals have anything to say about it. Yeah, they're coming they're, back for revenge. They're going to have to fix all five positions on the offensive line, and I think the Rams just got to fix one on, at linebacker. So you get Bobby Wagner in there, and you're like, um, we'll just chill for the rest of this offseason, you know? <laughs> they got Kaepernick. You pick up either Roger Saffold or Taylor Lewan from the Titans. No, I don't think you want that because they're hurt every other week. Now, Taylor's not, but Roger's hurt every other week. And when he's not hurt, he plays well, but – I mean, for the amount of money you have to pay him, you would like him to play all 17 games. Yeah, and not part of them. Yeah. All of them. Yeah, I don't need you uh, there for the first quarter and not be there for the rest of the game. I need you for the whole game, okay? Coach, so, I don't only play one snap, but I'm getting some real bad cramps right now. I think I yeah. just did this Yeah. Something that kind of surprised me. Um, so, OBJ obviously hasn't signed. Juju Smith-Schuster – is still a free agent right now. I think he'll go to Dallas. TikTok. I think so. Yeah, because Amari Cooper is going to be gone. Dallas has already made it clear they don't want Amari anymore. Which I don't understand. Well, I know that him and Dak Prescott got into it. Well, um, I don't think it's only that. I think it has a lot to do with that freaking contract and not, you know. And, I mean, when Michael Gallup and C.D. Lamb have more production than you do and more, Michael Gallup and more and leadership – are really good. Yeah. Well, Michael Gallup, I'm not saying they're not good. I'm just saying Amari Cooper is just not good anymore. He was just not as good as them. Yeah. It's it's as good as them because I don't think he's bad. Yeah. I think he I don't think he will have a problem finding a place to play football. I mean if he goes to the Eagles or something like that as a receiver, finish out his career up there. Um but they they have made it known that the big the big issue they're pressing is that when he got into it with Dak Prescott, he called him Kirk Cousins. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's great. Poor Kirk. So, 
Watch him go play with Kirk Cousins as his quarterback. Yeah, he goes to the Vikings, which he wouldn't do. It's Adam Thielen and Justin Jefferson, but they they got that on lockdown. Yeah, you're They're watching like, this now. Okay. Something for something also to keep in mind for the Cowboys: Michael Gallup is also unrestricted free agent. Yep. So I think he's one that you resign. He's he's done nothing but good for you. Um, been a been a reliable receiver ninety eight percent of the time. Um, you got you and there's no lacking in solid defensive backfield players either. Now, but I will say one of the ones that surprised me that didn't get tagged was Fisher from the Colts. No, I'm I not kinda, by that. I kind of I kind of thought that they would make some kind of push and not just let him go, but. Well, I think he's about when you tag somebody, you're tagging them at the, you know, in the median of the top five of that position. So left tackle being the most expensive position on the offensive line, you stay away from tagging as much as you can at the left tackle spot. And Eric Fisher was just not, I mean, from the minute he was drafted to Kansas City number one overall, he has not been worth a number one overall pick. Mm -mm. I will give you that one. Um I just don't think – I think Indianapolis can do better at left tackle if they take their second-round pick and don't trade it, leave it, keep it. I know that's something Jim Irsay doesn't want to hear, but keep your pick. It's okay not to trade for a bum quarterback, okay? It's okay. A quarterback with no legs and one arm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't trade for Jimmy G yet, you know. Give it, give it a second. Yeah, and then huh. – um, okay. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, I think uh, I think you could definitely pick a left tackle, or I mean, shoot, there's I mean, Dwayne Brown, like we discussed earlier. I think he would be a good fit in Indianapolis. But as much as I don't want him to go there, but um, I would love to see Indianapolis trade for Jimmy G, just so they can just keep giving their draft capital away for bone quarterback. It's fine. It's it's great for us. You know what? Yeah, we'll give you Logan Woodside. You can just start him all year. Indianapolis know? trades for Kirk Cousins. Oh, God. You just watch. I bet you money. <laughs> and watch them get no better. Yeah. Did we talk about <laughs> Yeah. What? Uh, Darius Leonard? Yeah. Yeah, so Darius Leonard tweets out. Let me see if I can get the exact verbatim tweet. Well, he's looking for that. I'm going to go a little bit further down this list. Um you got Cordero Patterson. Calias Campbell is available right now. Akeem Hicks, Melvin Ingram, Leonard Fournette, Antonio Brown, Ben Jones, I Devin really McCourty. I don't think Fournette is that good. I don't know. If you put him on a team with an offensive line, he's going to be good. But at the same time, there's not a lot of teams with a fully built offensive line that need a running back right now. Yeah. So I don't see him getting scooped up anytime quickly. Okay, so Darius Leonard, who's the linebacker, middle linebacker and leader of that defense for Indianapolis, uh, said, here we go again uh, with an exclamation point. Uh, that is important. Uh, about to be five years with the Colts and five different QBs, exclamation point. Thank you, Carson, for everything this year, my guy, exclamation point. Wish you the best, exclamation point. Dude needs to learn how to use some different punctuation marks, but uh, it's a good tweet if you're a Titans, Jaguars, or Houston Texans fan. So it's like, <laughs> Right. He made it all the way through with no mistakes. It's good. Are you are you looking for a quarterback, or how, how long do the temporary solutions last? They don't ever last. I'm going to go and tell you right now. They don't ever last. Do you draft one? It yeah, depends on who's available because in the second round, you're looking at probably Sam Howell and you're probably looking at Kenny Pickett. Well, and one guy you, you not mentioned there, Matt Corral could go late or could go early in the second too. So, so they've actually predicted him, and I don't know why. The last, the last uh, mock draft I saw where he was, with the Titans at 26, and I don't agree with that. But, I don't agree with that either. Um, especially with them signing side. I think for the Titans, the only way you take a quarterback there uh, at 26 would be to go one of two ways. Either Malik Willis falls for some reason, 
uh, or Carson Strong is sitting there at 26. You take one of those two. I don't think so either. But uh, if they are not there and you're not comfortable trading up to get a backup at this point, I think you're more so looking into the, okay, well, we'll just keep Logan Woodside um, and and keep looking. For the Colts, I don't – I honestly have no idea what you're doing. Jimmy Garoppolo is the only guy. For the Titans, it's not as much of a backup as it is grooming someone for that starting position next year. Yeah. So I think you would be justified in trading up to get a Carson Strong. Yeah, but how much are you trading up? Because the last thing you want to do is is finally get that quarterback but not have a first-round pick the year after. You know, so it just it doesn't, it doesn't really make sense to do that. My first and my second this year for your higher first. We don't have a second because we traded for Julio Jones. First and third. Mm-hmm. And then you don't really have a third either. Round. I don't think that will be worth it. Not when you have other concerns like tight end. Tight end, maybe yeah. offensive line, depending on what you're looking at. Yeah. Defensive backfield. I didn't say you fill that role. Yeah, but you're also looking at cap space, and the more people you cut, the more you got to bring back. So – yeah, it's 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 a loser's battle. Yeah. Uh, but uh, a lot of stuff to think about uh, as we get into the new league year. Um, Caleb, you good? Huh? Oh, sorry. yeah, yeah. So special shout out real quick to Brian. Um, Brian, y'all may not know this. What's in there? Said Brian. We go back to marriage. No, I'm just kidding. Went back to school. <laughs> Went back to school. Yeah, Brian's back at school. Um, he's doing good so far. Got an A. But, What's he uh, going for? Now you, you know Brian. Yeah, sports management and uh, <laughs> with a minor in sports broadcasting. So, so some cool things. Um, but yeah, moving. Moving up in the world, uh, one step at a time. But, yeah, so, I mean, pretty cool stuff. But, uh, yeah, so we'll get more into this uh, again next week uh, as some stuff starts to shake out the new league year is in seven or eight days, uh, which means free agency is not far behind. March really is March Madness, not just for college basketball, but for the free agency frenzy and the, one of the most exciting parts of the off season. Uh, you get a lot of news very, very quickly if you're paying attention to it. So uh, we will be keeping you informed as best we can every step of the way um, and and uh, really looking forward to these next couple of weeks. So uh, thank you all for watching. We'll be back next week. See you, Caleb. I'll see you all later. We'll miss you, Caleb. Yeah, yeah.